Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Friday morning to talk about how sales is changing and what you need to be doing in order to take advantage of those changes and make them better for your business instead of getting left out of wonderful opportunities because you don't want to be left behind that particular bus. Now, what we're going to talk about this morning is we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the overall world and environment of business development and then we're going to talk a little bit about the buyer process and how they're engaging today and then we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about things that you can do to innovate and leverage of course those wonderful relationships that you've spent so much time developing in order to be at the right place and the right time for the right reason. So with that, before we dive in and get started, I want to give just a couple of shout outs and thank you very much to Core Bank for providing us this wonderful training space and this great wall here that inspires so much creativity. We're going to have a good time and haven't we always wanted to write on the wall? So I get a chance to do that this morning. And then I also want to give a massive shout out to my presentation skills coach, Mike Bailey, who is here this morning. He's my camera guy, and he is working with us on, and here he comes to say hello. So he is here Good to help morning. us get going and make sure that I stay on track and give you the information that you need in order to just make the most of the opportunities that are here. Instead of being, um, you know, just a little bit hobbled or uncomfortable with the changes, these are good things that are happening. So just think about it from a little bit of a different perspective. Instead of the, oh, I'm not used to this, or it's something that I've never done before, you're going to learn how to do it. All right, now we're going to dive in for just a minute, though, and talk about the traditional approach that we've had to business development. And I have been a coach and an advocate of Sandler for years, and I absolutely love consultative sales process. Miller Hyman, integrity selling, spin selling, there are so many different methodologies that are out there that are truly amazing in terms of helping us as business developers or consultants better leverage what we bring to a client and help them understand our value. Now the challenge of what we're dealing with is we're in a completely different world and there's an amazing book that I'm reading right now that's called The Age of the Customer. And it was written by Jim Blassingame. And it is one that I highly recommend, and Mike's bringing it to me. So I highly recommend that you pick it up on Amazon. And there's, you know, I'm not an affiliate of this or any, in any way, shape, or form. It's just something that I've been in the middle of. And it does a really good job of explaining what's going on and helping you better understand the environment now helps you understand what you need to be doing in order to be relevant right now because that is of critical importance is relevance right now and he spends a lot of time in this book talking about that but what I want to spend some we're going to start first with talking about the consultative sales approach so what we've done before is we've typically had headlines or we've had these are the pains or the problems that our prospects are dealing with. And they engage because they want someone who can help them solve their pain. So in the consultative sales process, what we've done before ha has been, we've then defined the pain through our needs analysis. And we've engaged, we've really demonstrated our understanding of their challenges and through that demonstration we've hoped that they would align with us but just to make sure they really get how we understand what they're going through we've often had a sales process that agitates and if you think about the agitation think about it as a you know, it's, it's more along the lines of, well, how are you feeling about that? And who all is that affecting within your organization? And the challenge with a lot of this is, this process takes time. And if you think about it, the, the prospect doesn't really want to invest a lot of time 
in buying, they want to invest time in finding the solution and then solving their problem. So then through this process, we're over here with solving and what we end up with is we end up with prospects that typically bail out when we get to this point right here, even though we do have an understanding of their solution and we can help them. Now, why has this happened? Well, in the book, The Age of the Customer, what he talks about is the fact that we have been privileged to live in an environment where it was truly a seller's world. In other words, somebody had a problem and they were probably going to reach out to their immediate base of relationships and start their buyer journey with a referral. Now, in that immediate base of relationships, it was often it was limited to a geographic territory. Now, the world of Google and the internet has completely changed this. Now, what used to be just a couple of different options, now they're overwhelmed with potentially millions of solutions and it's overwhelming to them and they don't understand what the right journey is in order to select, well first of all understand all the options that are available, pick the one that's going to be the right one for them and then engage. So through this when you think about it, I mean even think about how your own buyer journey changes with normal processes. Think about what Black Friday has been historically. Five years ago, it was you go to a lot of your chain stores or the places where we would shop, we'd get in our car, we'd go, we'd look around, we'd buy something, we'd leave the store with it. Now, most of our shopping is done online. Amazon is providing these solutions for buyers but the problem is, is they're really not providing solutions, they're just providing transactions and an end product. And if you're dealing with a complex problem, you don't want a simple solution. There's one of those rules, it's kind of like Murphy's Law, that talks about for every complex problem, there is a solution that is simple, easy, and wrong. And we're all scared to death of making the wrong decisions. So what happens is you're going to reach out and you may still go through that first part of the traditional buyer journey where you're going to engage with someone and you're going to have a conversation, but if you don't see as a buyer what they can immediately do for you, you're going to disengage. And you may continue having conversations with them. You may have a relationship where you bump into each other at networking events. Maybe they even go to lunch with you a couple times a year, but they're not giving you their business because they don't understand where and how you're relevant to them in their world right now. So I'm going to give you a spoiler alert right here. If you're tuning in thinking I'm going to tell you how to get out of doing any consulting that you're not getting paid for, well, I'm going to do that and then I'm not going to do that because there is a part of what you have to do. You have to demonstrate your knowledge and your ability throughout the buyer process and through their journey. You need to be selective about how you're going to do that and you're not going to give them everything, but you do need to build value throughout the entire process. Now what we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about now is how people are wanting to engage and how they want to buy now. So if you think about, this is the consultative sales model where you engage, they understand, you're gonna to continue to pour a little bit of salt on that wound and continue to just poke at that pain point a little more until it gets so bad they're like, all right, I'll do anything to make it stop. That's not working anymore. What they want is they want someone who's gonna deliver value. So what I have here is we have, this is going to illustrate the buyer journey that your prospects are going to go through because truly that's what they're on. And they're no longer looking for transactions. They truly want a partner or trusted advisor that's going to guide them along this journey. Now, what you have to determine as a business development professional 
is you have to recognize that we have two different categories that we're going to fit our prospects into. One of those categories is they're qualified to do business with you and they become a client. The other bucket is they're disqualified and they become a no. So there are two different directions that they're going to take through their buyer or through your seller journey that you're going to engage with the buyers. So understand that throughout this process, at any time, it's up to you if you determine it's not a fit and if you're not getting the right indicators from that prospect that they get it, that you truly are going to be able to help them. And unfortunately, in some cases, there are some people that are happy with just a little bit of your solution. And then those folks are probably only going to engage through this process up to a certain point, and then they're going to say, that's okay, I'm good, and that's all right. But what you also have to remember is that as you're building these relationships with these prospects, remember that your prospects could also be attached to someone who is a future client of yours. So you can always leverage the power of relationships. But we want to build something. So if you think about there are triggers that have to take place within your sales process. And these triggers, these are mental triggers that happen. Now, the mental triggers, and I'm going to have to refer back to my notes here with this one because this is fairly new information that I have just been in the middle of grabbing. So the first thing that you're looking at in terms of mental triggers is your buyers are looking for someone who has authority. And if you think about authority, it's based on your years in business, it's based on your accomplishments, it's based on perhaps your education or accreditation. For instance, think about a doctor. When they come into their office, it used to be they always had the white coat. Well, consultants always had their suit on. So there could have been some implied authority through how we look. Now we're in a completely different world, so our authority has to be established in a little bit different ways. And you, you know me, I am a huge fan of capturing that authority through the credibility of others that are introducing you. So keep that in the back of your mind as we're talking. The other part of what, the, if you think about the environment today, people want to be part of a community. Think about how we belong to religious organizations. We belong to clubs. We affiliate with people. We want to be a part of something bigger than just us. So this is something that has to be present also through your process for them to want to align with you. We have anticipation. People want to get excited about what you bring to them. They want to look forward to you helping them. They want to look forward to what they're going to have as the outcome of whatever solution that they're, that they're going to engage with. They're also reciprocally minded. So there is an environment that is created or should be created throughout your seller journey that engages the reciprocity and the desire to engage and become a partner with you or become a client. And then we have social proof. Think about where you last ate out when you were trying a new restaurant. What did you look for first? In a lot of cases, we're going and we're checking out Yelp reviews we're asking our friends on Facebook about, have you ever tried this place out before? So we are looking at other people who have engaged. And remember, that's all about what referrals are. So keep that one dog-eared as well in the back of your mind. And then the last, but certainly not least, as far as one of the most effective mental triggers that needs to be included in your sales process is the scarcity. 
So now this one plays in. Remember I told you that people fit into one of two buckets. They are either qualified to do business with you and be a prospect, or they are disqualified. And we only have so many hours in the day, and we want to work with amazing people that really appreciate us during that time. Or what's the point? Life is just too short. So keep that scarcity in mind and make sure that you truly remain in control of the buyer journey or this, your part of it, which is the seller journey. All right, now I want to dig in and I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about how things are changing now. So now what people are looking for is they are looking for a problem solution. So if you think about now what they're looking for is this journey is one of transformation. And as you think about what that transformation needs to look like, they want to experience what this journey would feel like should they choose to go on it with you. And they want to really own it. Now, there was a study that was put out, and I've got access to the stats if you want it, because I, it was just a really, really good study. But basically, it's more than 50% of prospects today want to know just where you're going to fit in that first conversation that they have with you. I really want you to think about that, more than 50%. If they don't see it, if they don't see where and how you are going to be a positive addition to their life, you don't get to participate in the rest of the buyer journey. 50%. So what I want you to remember is that stories sell. And you have to be able to articulate just where and how you're going to bring value in their business and be relevant to them. So keep that in mind throughout this process. Now how this works is in this very first engagement that you're going to have,